Well, what we're going to do is get rid of all these buttons and just make a giant screen. A giant screen. What do you know about smartphones? They'll tell you it's about communication, entertainment, or something about peer pressure. But do you know what it's really about? What do you see? A device that improves convenience and revolutionizes the way we speak? I see a system on chip, a modem, a camera, and a random access memory chip. I see $450. That's what it costs to manufacture one iPhone. Over 40.8 million iPhones were sold in 2019. People spent over $715 billion on smartphones worldwide in the year of 2019. Behind the scenes, each piece of the smartphone is bargained by different companies just to get their system on chip, battery, or display inside a certain smartphone. And that's what smartphones are really about. Smartphones are an economy. The serviceable available opportunity, also known as the total addressable market for 5G, is continuing to expand in the coming years. In 2019, the total addressable market was worth around $65 billion, but by 2022, analysts estimate that it will be worth $110 billion. By 2035, nearing the end of the transition, the 5G market is estimated to be worth $13.2 trillion. This expansion allows for a massive growth opportunity for Qualcomm in the future. As 5G allows Qualcomm to raise prices for premium products, which would increase their profit margins by a significant amount. With the transition of 1G to 4G, the serviceable available opportunity was constrained by the smartphone. However, with 5G, we see the market start to expand to other industries, including healthcare, energy distribution, retail, factories, automobiles, and essentially every other major industry. The Qualcomm CEO said that 5G is the biggest opportunity he's ever seen in the company's 35 years of existence. With higher profit margins and more industries to disrupt, this will allow Qualcomm to leverage R&D in order to drive faster growth. 5G will offer a multitude of advantages, with the most obvious one being faster speeds. At the millimeter wave level, 5G will be 100 times faster than 4G. To put this into perspective, you can download a 2 hour film in 10 seconds rather than 7 minutes. 5G also has increased bandwidth for the IoT, which will lessen lag by a massive extent in crowded areas. Along with improved bandwidth, 5G also has far lower latency, which would mean less delay for online communication, more reliability for self-driving, and practically no lag when it comes to remote gaming. As 5G deployment continues to ramp up, customers who purchase 5G would be able to have their devices automatically switch to 5G in 5G enabled areas and have their devices turn back to 4G in 4G only areas. This 4G and 5G multi-mode will allow for a smoother transition. With the rise of electric vehicles from companies like Tesla, automobiles are advancing to more technology-based features, including autopilot, infotainment systems, and data connection. These are the three sectors Qualcomm will profit from, telematics, infotainment, and the adaptive driver assistance system, also known as the ADAS. The telematics is the equipment that connects the car to the internet, which Qualcomm is heavily involved in through their products. Along with telematics, Qualcomm supplies a huge portion of the infotainment dashboard, which all comes at a very high leverage compared to the smartphone business. Lastly, the ADAS will require all sorts of data stores and chips to run the system at a fast and reliable rate. When it comes to competition, it's practically non-existent. Qualcomm has an extremely strong moat built off of its patent portfolio. Qualcomm's patent portfolio is actually named as the most valuable patent portfolio in the world. These patents and licenses make it practically impossible to compete with the technology Qualcomm has. The main revenue and profit driver for Qualcomm is its Snapdragon platform and will soon be the Snapdragon 5G platform. The company has solved the long going issue of the modem to antenna with the Snapdragon 5G platform, which has been developed by Qualcomm's engineers for an incredibly long time. This platform will be adaptable to smartphones, PCs, automobiles, and networking. Outside of cost, there isn't much downside to upgrading to 5G, as battery life will still remain at a high level compared to 4G. In February, Qualcomm announced the release of the Qualcomm Snapdragon X60, which allows for the aggregation of all the 5G spectrum bands. First of all, what are the spectrum bands? Essentially, these are the three spectrum bands, the low band, mid band, and the millimeter wave. The low band has higher spread, 
has much higher latency and lower bandwidth. The mid band will have a spread large enough to cover at most a few homes, and the millimeter wave will be heavily concentrated but allow for higher bandwidth and low latency. Because these bands overlap over certain spaces, with the Snapdragon X60, this will allow for dynamic spectrum sharing. Dynamic spectrum sharing will allow for all the bands to be utilized and ultimately provide larger bandwidth and lower latency. Qualcomm and Apple once had legal trouble with each other, but due to Apple's reliance on Qualcomm, these lawsuits were dropped and Apple agreed to a six-year licensing agreement. Apple attempted to use Intel's modems for the iPhone XS, but these proved to be extremely problematic as they had plenty of issues. The iPhone 12 coming out in September 2020 will be 5G enabled with Qualcomm's Snapdragon 5G platform, allowing for massive potential to profit. Because of the fact that so many companies rely on Qualcomm, this makes Qualcomm stock extremely reliable. The largest of Qualcomm's partners include Samsung, HTC, Huawei, LG, Apple, Asus, Razer, Google, Motorola, and Nokia. Another sector of Qualcomm that is heavily overlooked is Qualcomm Ventures. Qualcomm Ventures is an investment segment of Qualcomm that invests in the future of technology, including 5G, AI, digital health, the internet of things, networking, and many more industries. They've proven to be extremely successful so far. For example, Zoom Communications, one of Qualcomm's largest investments, has been a multi-bagger for Qualcomm so far. Another successful investment for them is Ring, which sells a doorbell that has a security camera attached, allowing the user to see who approaches the user's house without the user even being there. Magic Leap is also another investment with huge potential, as it allows for sci-fi type 3D visionary that isn't augmented reality or virtual reality, but actual 3D images that can be moved with their hand. Due to factors like the global pandemic, Qualcomm has gotten to a very appealing valuation at a trailing PE of 18 and a 4P of 15. A PE at the mid 10s is extremely low for a company that is expected to have its revenue grow 25% year over year by 2021. To put Qualcomm's valuation into perspective, Microsoft is expected to have its revenue growth in the low 10% in the next few years, but is trading at a trailing P of 26 and a forward P of 24. Along with Microsoft, all the other large tech companies trade at a similar valuation to Microsoft, which just shows how much of a hidden gem Qualcomm stock really is. Using the discounted cash flow analysis, I obtained an intrinsic value of $109.40 per share, proving that the stock is undervalued from a cash flow standpoint. Using the relative valuation analysis, I got an intrinsic value of $122.70 per share, showing how Qualcomm is undervalued relative to its peers. Qualcomm's diversification of revenue allows it to be a reliable stock over the long term. The company sells products in auto, computing, cellular IoT, and non-cellular IoT. Last but not least is Qualcomm's strong financial status. The company currently has $11.8 billion of cash and $13.4 billion of long-term debt. With the one-to-one -one long-term debt to cash ratio, Qualcomm's balance sheet manifests how the company isn't in any financial danger. To top it off, their profit margin allows for a steady net income of $4 billion per year. This type of cash flow allows Qualcomm to leverage R&D despite the global pandemic. I rate Qualcomm stock as a strong buy due to its appealing valuation and growth potential. If you guys enjoyed this video, please hit the like button and subscribe. I appreciate your support.